So, readathon? And if you are new here, welcome. My name is Zoe and I make both bookish and lifestyle type videos and I'm so glad that you're here today. Today is Friday, it is July 2nd, and it is the start of the Summerween Readathon. I wasn't planning on doing this readathon for a very long time. I actually saw it, I think, maybe earlier this week on like Monday, and I was like, oh, that could be really fun. I want to do a readathon. I haven't done a readathon in so long. And so, of course, I started planning, and I had all of these like grand notions, which is just something I'm learning. I just do when I'm excited, apparently. And of course, as the day got closer, and the day is now here, I'm like, wow, I'm already tired. <laughs> I do still want to participate. I do still plan on participating. I'm just gonna probably alter a few things to make sure I don't overwhelm myself, still take care of myself, and also still enjoy the readathon. Basically, I'm going to be reading a stack of books that have to do with the readathon prompts, but I'm also going to be out and about this weekend. It's actually 4th of July weekend, so we have Monday off as well. And we're gonna be traveling over to my husband's hometown tomorrow to hang out with some family, and like, I think we're planning on going kayaking, getting coffee, drinking wine, barbecuing. It's gonna be so much fun, I'm really excited. So I'll take you along with me there. It's currently, what, 1.56? I am currently on my lunch break gotta go back to work soon, but I wanted to do a little intro clip and also show you guys the books that I plan on reading. So let me just jump into those really, really fast. A quick side note before I jump into these books, I <laughs> don't know if any of you have noticed yet, but my hands are pretty orangey because I did um, some self tanning last night and well, you know, I always have a problem with it getting on my hands. So please don't be distracted by that. It's just, it's the darn self tan. I always get it on my hands. Moving on. The first book that I'm planning on reading for this readathon that I'm currently reading and going to finish hopefully soon is The Sanatorium by Sarah Pierce. This follows our main character who is traveling to this sanatorium turned five-star hotel in the very atmospheric like Swiss Alps area. It's very like cold and there's mountains and it's like really beautiful. So she's going to the sanatorium turned five-star amazing hotel with her boyfriend and she's meeting some of her family there because her brother I think just got engaged and they're having an engagement party. Turns out that like a day into everyone being there the brother's new fiance goes missing. Our main character is a detective who is currently on like leave because she had a situation happen in her career that made her take like a physical and like mental break from the job basically. I have thoughts and feelings but I'll get into that later. The prompts for the readathon are to read a paranormal book, read a horror book, and read a book with Halloween colors on the cover, and then also read in the dark and bake or make a drink to go with your spooky read. So this one I feel like goes with the paranormal. There are some really interesting things happening. Not confirmed that it's paranormal, but either way it also feels kind of like a horror story as well because there's a lot of like very creepy scenes happening. The next book that I have goes with the prompt to read a book with Halloween colors on the cover and this one is orange and black and it is What Lies Between Us by John Mars. If you watched my last reading vlog you know that I read the one by John Mars and I absolutely loved it. Literally still weeks later and I can't stop thinking about it. I loved that book so much. So I picked up another one by John Mars. A few of you told me to pick up The Passengers and I'm also planning on picking up that one. However this one fit the prompt with orange and black on the cover and it actually sounds pretty good as well. The synopsis of this book is very vague, which I personally love, but it sounds like there's two characters, Nina and Maggie, and they live in the same house, and the synopsis says that every single night they have dinner together, and then afterwards Nina helps Maggie back into her room in the attic, uh, which is where she's chained to be, because Maggie did something that Nina can never forgive, apparently. So very sinister, sounds really intriguing. I... 
I'm interested to hear what Maggie did to be locked in the attic. I also don't know, like, is this a sister? Is it a friend? Is it a roommate? Who are you? What's going on? Why are there secrets? I need to know the things. So if this is written as well as the one was written, I'm just, I'm very excited. The next book that I have follows the prompt to read a horror story, a horror book, and that is Clown in a Cornfield. <laughs> I feel like I missed the boat a little bit on this one because everyone read it last year when it came out and I just never got around to it. I haven't heard very good things about it. I don't think I've seen anyone that's like loved the book or even highly recommends it, but it just sounds so ridiculous that I'm excited. I'm excited to read this, I'm not gonna lie. I hope it's not like awful. I have very low expectations going into it, so. I think it'll be fun. I feel like the title says it all, but I think there's like a clown going around and killing people and he's in a cornfield. So, should be a good time. And then the next thing, I did not know what to read for like paranormal. I don't read a lot of paranormal books and I don't know of a lot of good paranormal books. So I actually was like, trying really hard to think of something and I got very nostalgic and I decided to pick up scary stories to tell in the dark like the uh, kids books or whatever. These were my favorite when I was in elementary school like so scary terrified me. I can't believe I actually haven't picked them up since. I'm really really excited to read these. I think it's gonna be fun for a readathon especially to read some of these like short scary stories in between some of these longer books. The rest of the night let's see I've got work. It's actually um, Andrew and my uh, wedding anniversary so we've been married four years which is so fun. I love looking at like pictures from our wedding day. It was the best day of my life. So good. I love my husband. Um, so I think we're gonna go out probably for a nice little fun dinner tonight and um, hopefully I can finish the sanatorium. That is the plan. But for now I'm gonna get back to work and I will check in with you guys later. Good morning. It's Saturday. I definitely did not check in last night. We ended up going to dinner and then hanging out with some friends afterwards and then we were up until like midnight and so it just wasn't gonna happen last night, but it was really fun. It was such a nice like anniversary date night. We had such a good time. We got like a little dressed up. I'll play like a couple clips of the evening. Got dressed up and then like we went to a really nice restaurant. Unfortunately, we had to wait like an hour for our food. They were just so backed up, I guess, which was kind of annoying, but we got to sit on the patio outside by like the boat docks and it was really nice. It was just so fun to like hang out with my bestie. It's always, I don't know, Andrew's the best person that I know. And so I love our anniversary because I love thinking about our wedding day and just, yeah, getting to celebrate like us being together. So anyway, I'm so cheesy. Today is Saturday and it's currently 8.43. We are heading out to go to Andrew's hometown. He lives in like a smaller hometown in Wisconsin. It's like an hour and 45 minutes away, so it's a little bit of a drive. We're gonna go with his brother and then his brother's wife, Matt and Taylor. They're some of like our best friends, so we're gonna carpool there and hang out. My other sister-in-law and her kids are there, and then my mother-in-law and father-in-law are there, so it's like gonna be really fun to hang out with family this weekend. And they live sort of in the country-ish area, so it's really nice to kind of go there and unplug a little bit. Literally up until a year ago, they didn't even have Wi-Fi there. <laughs> like no Wi-Fi, very little service except for like one specific place in the house. So it's actually kind of nice because I really associate that house with like getting a lot of reading done and just relaxing and unwinding. So I think it's gonna be a really fun time. We also have some other fun weekend things planned, so it'll definitely take you long. But I wanted to pop in and quickly talk about the books that I did start reading. So I mentioned that I'm reading The Sanatorium. I started it a couple days ago. I've been listening to it on audiobook and this is the one that follows our main character who is staying at the sanatorium turned like five-star hotel. It's very atmospheric. It is like dark and snowy and very ominous and obviously like this kind of building turned into a hotel is just gonna be very like spooky in and of itself. Our narrator and our main character is unreliable. She had something happen at her police force job that we don't really get to know about until later on in the book. And like every other character in this book is also very unreliable. Like there's no one that I really like. I feel like I could go on a whole 
speech about this book. But I really think that overall the writing is not working for me. I think that this book is written so <laughs> strangely and I don't often critique writing because I'm not an author. I haven't studied literature in that sense but there's something about this writing that is really not working for me. It feels very info dumpy. It feels very like the author is just continually telling instead of showing. This feels paranormal. They're setting it up to be paranormal but I'm like halfway through the book and I can't confirm that it's paranormal. We're also following an alternate story at the same time that we're following our narrator who is looking for her like lost sister-in-law or future sister-in-law. We're following an alternate story of this like lady named Adele who works at the hotel and was like kidnapped essentially. <laughs> it feels very disjointed, like it feels very strange. So I don't know, I don't know what to make of this. You know what else is bugging me? Which is like very small on the spectrum of the rest of it, but the narrator is dating this guy who she builds up to be like just the most amazing match for her and like such a great guy and like they've been together for three years and he's been there for her and all this stuff and the minute that she goes to him to explain to him like my si my future sister-in-law's missing I've collected this evidence and like I'm thinking that this is happening he like snaps about it and I'm just like I kind of get it. It's a little bit believable in the sense that like she went through something on her police force. She's supposed to be taking a break from her career and like all this stuff. But he wasn't even like a little bit respectful or heard her out. And it just, it feels very like forced. Like it's like, wow, this guy's a D-bag. And like every other person in the hotel is a D-bag. <laughs> it's like weird. It's just not working for me. So I'll keep you updated. I do plan to finish it because it's a book club book, <laughs> unfortunately. And it also, I have like four hours left of the audiobook, so I should be able to fly through it pretty soon. But yeah, this one is just not a fave. Sadly, very sadly, because it was one of my most anticipated of the year. The other book that I actually started last night, I just started um, picking up and I was like, I'll read a chapter and just see what it's like. But I started What Lies Between Us by John Mars. And I'm already obsessed. I honestly think John Mars might be one of my new favorite authors. His writing is so good. The pacing is so well done. It's not sitting on like one scene or on one specific setting or timeline like it's just it moves like it's so easy to invest in this story um this is the one where we're following maggie and nina and you don't know like what their relationship is but they live in this house together and nina has basically like chained maggie to the confines of like the upstairs attic i don't think this is really giving it away because you find out right right at the beginning but Maggie's actually like an elderly woman. We're following like two older women and I wasn't expecting that and so it's like I don't think I've ever read a book from the perspective of like an elderly woman. So that's really fascinating and it's so cool because he writes from the perspective of both people so you're getting a dual like perspective which I love. Maggie who's the elderly woman she like does and says things like an elderly woman would. It's so refreshing. Like that's, I feel like a really good example of showing and not telling. The character is innately this person and everything, even the way she talks, it's so distinctly different from Nina. And so I'm like already so excited. I've only read like 25 pages, but I'm already invested and dying to know like what the situation is. <laughs> I also got, I thought it would be fun to show you guys, I got my book of the month uh, box here. So I actually, this is not sponsored or affiliated or anything. I decided to sign up for book of the month again um, after I got my promotion, which I got my promotion at work officially. I am now a manager, which is so cool. So I decided to treat myself to a book of the month subscription and I got a couple of books and I'm very excited about them. Oh, it's so pretty. Okay. So this is the one I'm probably the most excited about, but it's 56 Days, and it's a thriller that takes place during the pandemic. It's, I think it's like about a girl and a boyfriend who decide to quarantine together, and she finds out that he's not who he says he is, which just sounds so good. So I'm really excited about this one. And then I also got The Maidens, which I was not gonna pick up. When I hear like 
dark academia or like Greek mythology. I don't run to things like that. It's just not my first choice. But my friend Liv read this and she said it was so, so good. And it's by the same author who wrote The Silent Patient. So I did like The Silent Patient and I thought that the twist was really well done. So I'm hoping that this one is good as well. And then I also got Survive the Night by Riley Sager. I'm so excited to read this one. Liv also read this one. She's a crazy fast reader. And she didn't like it as much. And she loves Riley Sager. So I'm very intrigued. I have high hopes for this one because the setting just sounds so fun. And I'm excited for a thriller that takes place, I believe, in the car. Like someone is in a car with someone and they have to survive um, like this road trip or maybe he kidnapped her or something. I don't quite know. I don't really want to know that much. So yeah, I got a bunch of really fun thrillers that I just want to read right now. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to go. I'm going to bring my other books with me this weekend and hopefully get a lot of reading done. We are going to head out though and I'll take you along and check in later. check in at all yesterday because we did so much stuff it was like back to back just activities and it was really fun but really exhausting so by the time I got home last night I crashed so hard and clearly I'm not at my house I'm at my in-laws house and yeah it's been a really fun time of just doing like pure summer activities I also was really proud of myself because yesterday we went to the beach and I was feeling really anxious about going, especially with like family. I don't know why with family. I feel like I'm almost more comfortable <laughs> to do things that scare me in front of strangers because they don't know me, but it's like family or friends. It's like, mm, I don't know. Anyway, I went to the beach and wore my swimsuit, got in the water, had fun with my nephews and my husband and like actually had a really good time. So it's kind of a big like win for me and I was really, proud of that. Hoping to carry that kind of like confidence and attitude <laughs> into today as well. It is July 4th so there's probably going to be a lot of things going on. My sister-in-law Taylor and I are actually going to go to breakfast here in like 10 minutes so that's going to kick off our day. I think we plan on kayaking today, maybe another bonfire, fireworks, just all the fun stuff. I did want to check in though about the books that I've been reading so I've been able to squeeze in a little bit of reading time here and there <laughs> when I can. It's still not my favorite. I still feel like it's not written well. I feel like it took way too long for things to start really picking up. And there's a lot of things that this main character is doing that I just don't understand why she's doing them. For example, her brother is like a hothead, crazy, like manic anger used to throw things like she's clearly very afraid of him or at least that's what we're being told and yet she's like willingly just giving him information that she knows is going to set him off like it doesn't make any sense <laughs> I don't know why she's doing that or like what her thought is and then the other thing that I wanted to mention about this book is that there's so many different plot points like there's so many different things happening it's so hard to figure out what you should be kind of spending your focus and energy on while reading this. I don't know. It's just a very weirdly written book. <laughs> That's the best way I can explain it. So I'm still listening to it. I have about three hours left. So 
Hopefully I can finish this one soon. And then I was able to read up into 60 pages of this one, so a little bit further, and I'm really, really liking this. This is just so wild, and I'm so intrigued. I still don't know what happened between Maggie and Nina. I don't know why <laughs> Nina has chained Maggie to the attic. I don't know what's going on. I'm so intrigued, though, because there's this really weird, like, love still between them, but there's this weird tension, and Nina's still doing, like, these things to, like, kind of punish Maggie, but she still takes care of her, so it's very strange. I don't know what's going on, but I really am enjoying this one so much, so I can't wait to figure out what happens as I continue on in this one, too. Okay, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go start my day. I'm gonna go do all of the fun and exhausting things, and it's gonna be a great day. And Andrew wants to say hi! <laughs> Are you having fun this weekend? Yeah, it's a good time. Yeah? It's a good time. What's been your favorite thing so far? Um, going to the lake and having big fires out at the lake. Yeah, it's a good time. that was fun last night. Okay, well, we'll see you later. Bye! I stand by you when you're falling when the river is calling I said I love you forever We can make it together What goes up must be down There's lots of friendly faces all around And nothing's ever lifting me higher Than a touch of your sweet desire Watching the fire We'll be safe on the devil's choir I stand by you when you're falling When the river is calling I said I love you forever We can make it together Finally, it is Sunday. No, it's not. It's Monday. My days are so mixed up <laughs> after this weekend. It's Monday. We've had off today and we came back home today. So it's currently 4.37 and I am tired and I have a billion things to do before work starts again tomorrow and I'm just so flustered but I'm here. I've been reading, I've been trying to do all of the things for this vlog. <laughs> I love how I decided to do a reading vlog on like the busiest weekend I've probably ever had. We did so many fun things, but it left so little time for reading. And all of the people watching this that only want to see reading content, I'm very sorry. <laughs> Cause so far there hasn't been much of it, but truly from this point out, there's going to be a lot more reading and probably the rest of my clips are going to just be about reading because my weekdays and work days are really boring so I'm not going to be filming a lot of those but I will be filming a lot of reading updates. I'm still absolutely loving What Lies Between Us. I am about 100 pages in now so I still haven't made like a good dent but I seriously I I've been picking this up and honestly reading like a couple of pages at a time and it's just so entertaining. It reminds me so much of the one in the sense of just like the really good writing and the pacing is so perfect and just the details of what you find out when you do is just 
chef's kiss. It's so good. It's so, so good. I'm really liking this one. And then I'm also reading the sanatorium. I think I have about like two hours left. So I'm really close. I'm getting there. I am trudging my way through this book. Truly. That's what it feels like. <laughs> it's been a bit of a hot mess with that one, but I'm making my way through. I have some things to do like around the house, get the house tidied. And I really want to take like a shower and wash my hair and do some laundry, do the dishes, just all the things that I like to prepare for with the week. That's what I'm going to spend the rest of my night doing. And then I will check in when I have read more. And hopefully, I think the next time I check in, I'm going to finish the sanatorium because I want to at least finish a book by the end of this long weekend. <laughs> so that's my goal. Good morning. It's Tuesday. I did not update y'all last night because I was so tired from this weekend. But I'm here. It's Tuesday. I'm still going strong in this readathon. I promise I am. I actually finished the sanatorium. So there's that. I feel like I could honestly do a like rant review video. I have so much to say about this book because I feel like a lot was just really poorly handled and like written and unnecessary. I have not read a book that I felt <laughs> was really like written badly in a long time and I really think that that's this book's downfall. Overall, I think I would give it like a 2.5 out of five star rating because I do feel like this book could work for a certain group of people or a certain type of reader. I've been trying to think of who that reader would be because I don't hate this book. It just really did not do well for me and the type of mystery thrillers that I like to read. I would say maybe if you're newer to the genre, you might really like this. It had some really, I felt <laughs> personally, some really cheesy twists, some really just drawn out scenes, some like really obvious and glaring like red herrings throughout the book. There was so much going on, like there was so much happening in this book and it all tied together at the end, which I can appreciate, but it was like the author, I think, tried to just put as much in this story as possible. Like there was just so much happening. Um, I did read that this is the author's debut novel. So it definitely, I feel felt like that. I'm really not usually that critical when it comes to books and how they're written. I just felt like that was really truly this book's downfall for me. And I think I already talked about it, but this main character, <laughs> she's a detective who like has issues with her job. She has this traumatic past with her two brothers. Her one brother died like 15 years earlier. And that's like, still ruining her life to this day. She's got a complicated boyfriend and you're literally simultaneously trying to figure out what happened to her during her job. Why is she on leave? The mystery of why her brother died and how her brother died 15 years earlier. Her complicated relationship with her boyfriend is like kind of there and kind of not. And then like while she's in the hotel, there's people getting murdered. And I just feel like this character as a detective who's like good at her job but like on leave for some mysterious reason we don't really know but it's not really a big plot point but it is but it's not i couldn't root for her because she just felt so weak as like a character and she made so many bad choices like if if being a detective is her career she's not very good at it i really didn't like the actual like reasoning behind the murders and how they were happening. This one was just definitely like a flop for me. And I think if you're a seasoned mystery thriller reader, probably stay away from this one. It just was not my favorite. So sad day, cause that's also a book club read. And I don't like when I don't like the book club picks, but what can you do? So I'm still reading What Lies Between Us. I actually stayed up way too late last night uh, reading this before bed and I'm about 150 pages in now. It's like one of those books that all of a sudden you've read 50 pages and you didn't even know that's how far you got. So I'm feeling really good about this. I was nervous that I wouldn't be able to finish it by the end of the readathon, but I do think I will. And now that I'm done with the sanatorium, I can actually move on to Clown in a Cornfield, which is gonna be really fun, I think. And then also those scary story books, which I do need to still read in the dark and then also make a spooky drink or like a drink to go with my spooky reads 
or bake something, but I don't think I have time to bake something this week, so I think I'm gonna make a drink. I'll have to brainstorm what to do. I'm thinking probably something kind of like fall-ish, maybe like a chai or something. I don't know, I'll have to brainstorm. With that said, I'm actually currently working, so I'm gonna get back to work, and then I will check in with you guys a little bit later after my work day. So it's 5.30ish and I'm officially done with work. I finished work a couple hours ago, but I have been cleaning and I went for a walk and just doing all of the productive things for this week. Also, I just like am hating my hair right now. What is going on? But I got some fun things in the mail, so I thought I would share with y'all. The first thing that I got was Sips by. They send me a monthly subscription. It's not sponsored or anything like that, but I do really like their tea. And if you are a tea fan, I do really recommend them because it's not that expensive. And I have a plethora. I have like a whole basket full of all of these teas that they send me. And it's so fun to like try new ones, especially if you're like adventurous and stuff. So these are my July teas. And let's see what I got. Okay, so this one is the Tea Haven Premium Indian Tea. This looks super good. It's lemongrass, ginger, fennel seed, white pepper, and peppermint. That sounds bomb. Super excited to try that. This one is off black generation tea, just dessert, mint, and chocolate tea. Look how cute it is. I'm really excited for that one too. I got like four of those, so that's super exciting. And then this one is by the brand August, Uncommon Tea, No By Heart. And it's white tea with orange blossom, almond, and honey. And I've actually had this brand before and I really do like it. So it says that it tastes like sweet almond sugar cookie and orange blossom. And it feels like honeyed guitar chords. Oh my goodness, how lovely. <laughs> And then this one makes me so happy. This is my, I think, third time I've gotten this brand, but their packaging is so cute and it does taste good. I've, I've had a couple of them before, but this one I've not had before, but look at how cute it is. I want to literally save the packaging. This one is called the Sanguine Strawberry, and the ingredients are green tea, strawberry pieces, raspberry pieces, natural flavoring, safflower petals. Oh, look at the back, too. So cute. I am obsessed. I'm super excited for all of those teas and I might make one tonight. The next thing that I got was a little letter from a friend on um, Instagram and I believe, I know what this is, but I'm gonna just, just gonna make sure. This is so cute. There's a little note and everything. I love handwritten notes so much. This is so cute. This is from my friend Fabiola on Instagram and she has a new business and I will link it down below. It's at Fab and Alley Creations and she made me this super sweet bracelet with my name on it. I don't know if the thing is gonna be able to focus. Focus, look at how cute that is. I can't tell if I have it. I think I have it the wrong way, I don't know. But look at how pretty. Oh, I'm so excited to wear this. Thank you so much, Fabiola. That was so sweet and totally made my day. And then the next thing that I have, I'm so excited about this. I'm trying to go fast, I promise. This is a package from The Daily Grace Co., which is a like Bible study type of company. They have really, really cool Bible studies, specifically towards more towards like females and sort of like a feminine aesthetic. But I really like their stuff and they were having, they might still be having, I don't know, it felt like it was going on forever, but they were having a $5 sale where they were literally selling their studies that are normally like 20 bucks for five dollars so yeah I stocked up big time I'm so excited right now oh okay so literally this is the first thing that I see and it says save the date and it says that their largest warehouse sale is coming on July 25th so I don't know if that's gonna be even bigger than the, the sale that they were just having. I don't know what's going on with them. I think they're trying to clear out some of their like backlog stuff that they have, but a sale is coming. I'll link their website down below in case you wanna check these out. Their stuff is so cute. Look at this, like even this cute little thank you card. I'm just obsessed. I love the, their branding is so good. So the first thing that I got, and I'm so excited, I've actually never bought these before, but they are like these kind of Bible, 
cards, if you will. This one is the attributes of God. Let me take it out of the package. Here is kind of like the beginning and it says attributes of God. And then this one says like eternal. And then it talks, it says God has no beginning and no end. He was always is and always will be. And then there's a couple of different verses down here in regards to that. And then there's also a Bible verse on the back, which is really cool with like a cool little photo and stuff and there's a bunch of them in here. I personally think they would be really pretty to like put on the wall maybe around like your mirror or something like that. So maybe like your fridge um, but then in general like when you're just for me like when I'm going through a tough time and I want to remember the attributes of God like these are so cool to just flip through and like pick one and read it and really like kind of meditate on it. So I'm so excited for these. They had a bunch of different kinds of these too and I'm just very excited. I also got this print which was also part of their sale. Here's the print and it says, "'Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus." I just thought that was so pretty. Okay, and then this is the last thing that I got before all of the studies that I'll show you, but I actually also got um, Bible like tabs, little tabs for the different books of the Bible. I <laughs> take 10 years to find the book that I'm looking for and I need tabs all the time and these are just so like aesthetic, like I love the coloring and there's little pictures of flowers in the background. I'm just, these are so like good quality. I cannot believe I got all this stuff for five bucks each. So now I'll dive into the studies. I apparently got five of them. I don't remember that, but I did. <laughs> the first one that I got is titled Amen, the story of scripture from Eden to eternity. And this is what it looks like. So beautiful, like, so interactive. This is like glossy paper. These are really good quality. Oh my goodness. I'm so excited. I think the thing that I'm like the most excited for is that they have the scripture that you read and then like a little maybe like paragraph going into it more like a little bit more of a study on it and then also they have questions pertaining to the exact scripture that you just read so you can do a little bit more of studying. I've done studies in the past that I've enjoyed aesthetically but I've been really disappointed by because the questions are the exact same for every single day that you read which I find just to be a bit of a bummer because that's so repetitive and it doesn't really force me to like dig into the scripture that I just read more you know so I'm really excited about these. The next one that I got is called Even If A Study of Habakkuk and I'm really excited about this one as well. Um, I've never studied that book of the Bible so I think that'll be really cool. Again, just so beautiful. This one I'm personally the most excited for because I studied um, songwriting and worship leading in college and this one is Hymns Volume 2, A Classic Study on hymns and I'm just yeah I love hymns and I'm really excited that there's a study that exists for them. This one is called Preaching the Gospel to Yourself and it's gorgeous just like all the rest. I mean come on. And then this last one is called Emotions and the Heart and I actually believe that this one is like in regards to depression and um, struggling with depression so I'm very excited for this one as well. Absolutely amazing sale. Sounds like they're gonna have another one soon. So if you're interested, definitely go and check some of this stuff out because it's gorgeous. Alrighty, well, with that said, I am going to make myself some dinner. I actually did start reading while well, listening to the audiobook for Clown in a Cornfield by Adam Caesar, and mm, I'm a little bored. I am a little bored, I'm not gonna lie. I knew that not a lot of people liked this book. I didn't know why and I couldn't remember why if you ask me, <laughs> but I really had low expectations and so I was going into it with low expectations. It's giving me so much of, um, what's it called, There's Somebody Inside Your House by Stephanie Perkins vibes. Like a group of high school students, kind of rambunctious, kind of like rough around the edges and they're in their town and they're pretty much getting killed off one by one and it's just kind of boring. I feel like there's a lot of scenes that are really unnecessarily long. There was this one scene where they were in school and they were like getting yelled at by their teacher and it took 
so long. I was like listening to it. I'm like, are we still in this scene? Like, <laughs> this is so obnoxious. So I'm not loving this. It's also being told from the perspective of a new girl in town. Now she's kind of a part of this like rough around the edges crowd. And it just, I don't know, I kind of wish that there wasn't like this new person because I'm not really invested in her. And I just, I don't know. So yeah, not loving it, but I'm going to keep reading it because it's very easy to listen to right now. And I've got a lot of chores and stuff to do around the house tonight. So it's going to be the one that I'll be listening to. I am going to, I believe, read in the dark tonight, which is one of the prompts for this readathon. It's the only night that I can do this prompt. So uh, wish me luck. It's a Tuesday. <laughs> And I have work tomorrow and I hope I don't scare myself, but we're going to try to um, have a good time reading in the dark. So I'll check in later when it's time for that. Hello, I'm here in the dark. It's almost 10 o'clock and well, the mostly dark. I have a little like candle wax warmer thing on over there and then my lights on the wall over there. Otherwise it would be like really, really dark and I couldn't see what I'm reading. So... We have to compromise here, but I am in the dark. Andrew went to bed. Scout's hanging out with me out here, and I've got my collection of stories with me. I'm very excited to read these. This does come in a three pack. I don't think I'm going to get to all three before the end of the readathon. I'm wondering which one I should read. One, two, or three. This one probably looks the scariest. I'm not gonna lie. This is more scary stories to tell in the dark. So I think this is the second one. I think this is the one I'm gonna go with <laughs> because I'm clearly just looking to stay up all night, apparently. I don't know. I don't know if these are gonna scare me. I think I mentioned this in the beginning that these books were my favorite to read when I was in elementary school. And I literally remember like they were always checked out. They were really hard to get your hands on because people wanted to bring them home all the time and read them. I remember the exact location that they actually were in my elementary school library, which is like how you know I loved these because that's how much I can remember. I also remember like sneaking them home because the covers were really scary and I didn't want my mom asking me like why I was reading something so dark and scary. <laughs> and I do actually remember a couple of these stories like really kind of freaking me out. There was one about like a girl who like dies at a gravesite or something like that. And then there's like another one where a girl has like a pimple on her face and then she pops it and it's like spiders or something. I don't know, it's so weird. So I'm wondering if reading these will kind of make me feel nostalgic. They probably will, but yeah, I will go ahead and uh, get reading in the dark. and I am super tired. I read all the stories in this bad boy and <laughs> I have to say I definitely 
must have enjoyed these a lot more as a kid. And now I know, too, why they were so appealing to me in elementary school, because they're for children. (laughs) But, I mean, I love reading the occasional children's books, so it wasn't, like, a burden to read these at all. Some of them were really just boring, though, and pretty basically written, which, again, children's book, I should have known this, but... uh, yeah, they were. it was a lot of fun to read something kind of easy and break up all these other books that I've been reading, but definitely not as appealing as an adult. And maybe it was just this one, because this one didn't have any of the ones that I actually do remember. So maybe if I have any time left over, I will maybe read a couple of stories out of these ones. But yeah, overall, it was fun, but now I'm very tired. And I think I'm going to hit the hay. I do want to mention that I did read more of Clown in a Cornfield. And I still feel pretty much the same about it. But I think I should be on track to finish it tomorrow. And then I also really want to keep reading and finish What Lies Between Us. Because I'm really enjoying that one. So, yeah. But for now, I'm very tired. And I have work in the morning. So I'm going to go to bed. Hello. Happy Wednesday. It's currently... 118 and it's my first time checking in today because I am starting to feel a little burned out with this readathon. <laughs> As I'm sure everyone is when it's a week long readathon, it just kind of starts to like, oh yeah, a week is kind of a long time. That's how I feel. But still listening to Clown in a Cornfield and it's going well the the pace is picking up the action is happening and i am a little bit more invested now i'm not surprised on who the mystery of like the clown was or is but it is a horror novel and i don't read a lot of horror books so i don't know if it's supposed to be as like thrilling as a mystery thriller in that sense but yeah, it's okay. It's it's a horror book, that's for sure. So I feel like I would actually kind of really like this if this was a movie. I feel like it would be a really fun, like, kind of, sort of, like, Scream-esque, like, slasher film, sort of. And then I also did read a little bit of... <laughs> what is the book? I cannot remember the book title of the book that I'm really liking, To Save My Life, because it's so generic. What is the title? It It ends in the word us. And it's by John Mars, but I cannot remember the title of it. Anyway, I'm still really liking that one, and I do hope to finish it by tomorrow. Fingers crossed. I have been a little heads down with like work stuff today, and today also was a therapy day. So I just feel a little tired, I'm not gonna lie. I feel like my energy levels are pretty low right now. Therapy was really good. I actually just got done with it. Sort of heavy. I haven't cried in therapy for a couple of sessions. I feel like my first like seven or eight sessions were just cry fests essentially. And then I really feel like ever since then I've just been seeing so many improvements and I kind of already talked about this in my last video, but it's been really cool to sort of start assessing things from a little bit less of an emotional side and more of a thoughtful side, if that makes sense. Not that you can't be emotional and thoughtful at the same time, But today we were talking a lot about sort of like my body image and why I struggle with it so much and why I have so much like internalized fat phobia and where that comes from. And it's fairly easy for me to assess that like I very much buy into this thought that society sells to us that we're supposed to subscribe to in that I'm not a lovable or worthy person if I don't look a specific way, right? And that's like what so many companies, beauty companies, hair companies, clothing companies, fitness companies, like so many companies rely on you feeling those insecurities so you will buy their products. And I feel like I can fairly easily identify those things and feel this semblance of like, screw you, I don't choose to subscribe to that. Why do I have to choose to subscribe to that? And like, you don't get to own me and the choices I make regarding my body and the way that I look, my hair, my skin, my things. But on the flip side of that comes this really deeply rooted way that I grew up and the kind of bullying and the trauma that I did endure as a kid became such a deeply rooted insecurity and it turned into this fat phobia 
And so that's much harder for me to work through. And kind of separating those two things was interesting because I think for so long I've really just blamed like the only reason I feel this way is because of societal culture and societal norms and expectations. But really when it comes down to it, the reason I buy into that so easily is because of the things that I experienced as a kid and how that turned into my like actual core internal beliefs. And that's like much harder to get over, you know, that's much harder to separate from or battle against because it's been so deeply rooted for so long and it's so personal, you know? Definitely an interesting conversation. One that I'm really grateful for though, um, but I feel like it took a lot of sort of my energy and I'm just feeling, I'm fine, but I'm just feeling like kind of tired and I'm feeling kind of like I need to sit on it for a little bit. So anyway, with all that said, I probably, if I'm being realistic, will not check in for the rest of the day and I will catch up with you guys tomorrow, which is the last day. And I'm planning to have Clown in a Cornfield finished by then and then hopefully very much closer to finishing the other book that I like so much, but I can't remember the name of. <laughs> What's up? Happy last day of the Summerween Readathon. It's Thursday and it's currently one o'clock in the afternoon. I have like 100 pages left of What Lies Between Us there. I remember it finally. And I'm kind of freaking out because 100 pages is a lot. It's a lot, but I'm gonna try and get myself to do maybe some reading sprints throughout the rest of the day and the evening and get this bad boy read because I do really want to finish it and if I do finish it, I feel like I will really have accomplished this readathon. And then the only other thing that I have left to do is to make a drink to go with my read. And I was thinking a lot about this because I was like, I love making me a good hot drink. What am I going to make? And I think I'm gonna <laughs> attempt to make a chocolate chai latte. I feel like that sounds so good right now. I feel like it kind of goes with the whole spooky fall cozy vibe. It's also very cloudy today so I think it's just gonna fit right in perfectly with this book and with this day and hopefully get me through to the end. <laughs> probably tell I look a little different than my last clip and it's like 9 40 p.m. and I just got done with our live show and it was so much fun I feel like I look a little flushed because we were talking about the sanatorium which was our book of the month to read and I was raging about it <laughs> in the uh, in the live show because I just there was so the more I thought about it the more I just really did not like that book. So anyway, you already know about that because it was in this vlog that I read it. But yes, it's Friday. I did an update yesterday. I finished this pretty late into the night and then my day today just got away from me. But I am here to say that I did finish it last night. I did complete the Summerween Readathon 2021. It was so much fun. 
so so much fun and it ended on a really good note because I loved this book oh man John Mars this is my second book from him and I'm not saying he's like a new favorite author however the fact that I read two books from him pretty close together and they were both like I would say this is like a four star maybe 4.5 like I can't really think of anything specifically wrong with it it didn't feel as special and as good as the one but it was still really good so interesting like just the plot was interesting the pace was so good the relationship between the two characters the twists that happened some of them I saw coming but I wasn't even mad about it because it was just delivered so well <sighs> I really liked this book so much and I'm so excited to read another book by him already. I know he's written like a handful of books so honestly I'm at the point where I'm like gonna read many many more of his books and hopefully I like them just as much as this one. I don't want to share much about what happened because that's I think the brilliance of at least the last two books of his that I read was just not knowing that much and going along for the ride and reading about these two characters, their relationship with one another, why one of them has the other one basically shackled and chained for two years in the attic. Like Oh my gosh! <laughs> the more I'm talking about this and thinking about what happened, so good. If you are a fan of mystery thrillers, if you feel like you've been getting a little burnt out on mystery thrillers, especially if you're like me and you read a lot of like domestic mystery thrillers and you're getting a little tired of some of the same stories, oh so creative so different so good just so good. I loved it loved it loved it loved it. Well with that that's the end of the Summerween Readathon. I had so much fun. I hope that this vlog was semi entertaining and most of the books that I read, I didn't love. However, I ended it, like I said, on a really good note with this amazing book. So I'm not even mad about it. And the fact that I read, what, like four books in a week? Well, that might be the most I've read in a week and probably this whole year, very, very long time. I am just loving reading right now. So this readathon came at the perfect time. Thank you so much to the hosts Gabby and Olivia for putting this readathon on because it was just perfect timing. Absolutely loved it. Had so much fun. Thank you guys so much for watching as always. I love you guys so much and I will see you soon in my next video. Bye!